there are so many challenges first of all there is emotional uh, 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 challenge because in the course of everything uh, the father left us so i was left as a single mom to cater for her did she leave because um, of this yes wow because he didn't want us to continue with the child this way but i said i'll keep her oh my god so he left so i was left to cater for her alone and so being a single mom a working mom it has not been easy welcome back if you just joined us this is the conversation we're reaching you from kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital abuja now we're having our next chat we have um linda dong she is the mom to zit chat noro and we'll be we're still commemorating international day of the girl child 2022 it's good to have you on the show again now thanks for having me on the show great awesome how are you i'm good <laughs> no, i mean how are you I'm fine. Awesome. Thank you. I like to hear that. I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you. And how is Zit Chats? She's doing great. We're pulling through. Mm. She's doing great. So now, according to um, UN statistics, it says every minute more than 30 women are seriously injured or disabled during labor. However, those um, 15 to 50 million um, women generally go unnoticed. Now, briefly walk us through your childbirth journey with Zichat. Okay. Um, uh, pregnancy was uneventful. Normal pregnancy. Um, I conceived uh, twins. I was conceived of twins. So, uh, during the antenata, like in the third towards the third trimester i was noticed to have developed what we call pregnancy induced hypertension pregnancy induced hypertension is could be deadly if not well managed for the mom and the child for the mom and the child okay so during the course of the pregnancy when i was diagnosed i was um closely monitored until i got to what we call preeclampsia. that means there is protein in the urine and it could be fatal for the mother and the child so while the children were not them they had to book for a c-section so the children can be removed prematurely to save the mother and the baby because mother could develop what we call eclampsia where she'll be having fits seizure-like fits and it could be deadly because it could reduce placenta supply to the baby baby could die in vitro so Mm -hmm. um cesarean section was booked early children were pre uh, babies were premature but what happened was there was crisis there was curfew and there was strike the government hospitals were on strike so we had no option than to go to a private hospital which i am not sure they had neonatal facilities so after the c-section mother was fined but along the way, two days later, uh, the two babies were noticed to have developed what we call jaundice, uh, neonatal jaundice. Usually, neonatal. What's the cause of jaundice? Jaundice is the free flow of uh, destroyed red blood cells in the uh, baby's body that presents itself as yellowish discoloration on the skin, the conjunctiva, and the mucous lining of the mouth. Usually, what happens is in premature children, the liver is not developed when there is excessive destruction of red blood cells the liver is the main organ that conjugates like captures those red blood cells and store them not allowing them to flow freely because they could be deadly if allowed to flow freely in the bloodstream so because they were premature the liver was not developed so the only way to manage that is to what we call phototherapy either put the children to a light or do what we call exchange blood transfusion and then giving of glucose to supply energy because the babies will be weak so but because that hospital didn't have neonatal facilities and there was strike there was nowhere to go to um, we were referred to another private hospital that had uh, neonatal facilities but 
Jaundice spreads rapidly in newborn babies. So before we could get to the private hospital that had the neonatal facilities, the other babies, the second baby's bilirubin level had gone high. She did not survive till afternoon she passed. Wow. Zichard had to go through the theater. She had what we call EBT, total EBT, like removing of her blood and putting another one. After two days, the bilirubin level was still high. They removed the blood, put another one. But in the course of it, nature has made it in such a way that not everything crosses, crosses through to the brain. But if the bilirubin level is too high and gets to cross to the brain, it could cause damage. And we call that one kenic terrors. And that was exactly what happened to her. The bilirubin level got so high, it crossed the brain barrier and then affected a part of the brain, thereby wow. leading to what we call cancerous uh, cerebral palsy. And then other complications will be manifesting as the child grows. So what are that manifestation? Because I, I know you said she's, she's 11. Yes, she's 11. She'll be 12 by March next year. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what other uh, manifestations have you seen over time? Yes. Uh, she had seizures. She was having seizures as a uh, fit. And that one has been taken care of because we go to hospital regularly to see the, the neurologist. And then they place her on what we call anticonvulsants and other medications. And then she's spastic. That's the body becomes stiff at a time, and then you see her having spasms. That one is that, is that does it come like once in a while, or is, is it just yes, she has to be on drugs without those drugs, mm -hmm. she will be spastic. As it is now, we had to give the medication before we came here. If not, so that's she, why it's free, yes, that's why she can even relax. Oh, if wow. not, the body becomes very stiff, and you could see the muscles twitching, mm -hmm. and that can be very painful. painful. And then she cries all through. So she has to be on those medications. And then over time too, she has developed contractures. Like the legs have twisted. They are not aligning. The bones have just formed a cough, an abnormal cough. Just because she lies down throughout the day. We only carry her to feed and change diaper and others. Mm. Now I know that it can really be draining and exhausting. <laughs> being a career mom and also catering to a child with special need so tell us what kind of challenges have you had to go through and how have you been able to deal with them yeah there are so many challenges first of all there is emotional uh, 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 challenge because in the course of everything uh, the father left us so i was left as a single mom to cater for her did he leave because um, of this yes wow because he didn't want us to continue with the child this way but i said i'll keep her oh my god so he left so i was left to cater for her alone and so being a single mom a working mom it has not been easy you know there is physical stress I come back from work very tired. Thank God I have a sister who stays in, has agreed to stay in to take care of her. Mm. She does very well. She's her second mother. Mm. Always, she knows the medication. She knows what to do. Mm. Even when I'm not around, that's why I can comfortably go on night duty, come back and I don't mm. have any fears. Mm. I come back tired. You see her crying. Maybe the auntie is trying to do one thing or the other. Even though I'm tired, I'll still have to carry her. And then you see your child struggling every day. The pain of seeing your child struggling every day and you can't do anything about it. It's, it's, it's overbearing. And then the financial implications. You know, we have to buy diaper. She doesn't feed on regular family diet because she cannot swallow solids. So she takes only liquids. So how do you pass the liquid through? She takes, she drinks tea. And then you make golden one, you make it very soft, add plenty of water. She can take that one. She can take pap. She can take um, liquids. Does yogurt. she pulls? Yeah, she pulls. There was a time she was having constipation. 
constipated because she was not getting fiber from her diet until mm. we introduced goldimon i think that resolved the issue and sometimes that means you have to select your food yes you have to and she doesn't get enough nutrients because most of these foods she's feeding on are processed foods mm. so you don't get so she doesn't get those natural nutrients that will sustain her she's not thriving well she's been losing weight recently and recently she developed anemia too wow so the challenge medications are very expensive you know you have to buy the drugs without the drugs she cannot go a day without those drugs so not even a day not even a day so not even a day three times a day she has to take those medications so it's 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 really overbearing and then uh diaper you know the comp the uh, wearing of diaper for over how many years now 11 years sometimes she develops a bed so because of the diaper yes nappy rash all these yeah. ones but then once in a while it comes it goes it comes and goes like girls and women of all ages with all form of um, disability are, are generally among the more vulnerable and marginalized in the society so we were told so have you been have you ever faced any form of stigma of going out with um zit yes i've experienced one or two and um one that i can recall we went for an occasion went for a party and as i was walking towards the crowd with her some two women came and dragged me back that you don't carry this kind of women. child yes you don't carry this kind of child to the public the word this kind of child hit me so hard i went back i wept and then we have friends who when they invite children for a birthday party or so i feel they don't want us to go because of her condition they stigmatize they don't want this child with disability to go to where their children are and then sometimes when you see a crowd of children maybe a children's program the sunday school and the church anyway you see children gathered around they want to see why is this child like that sometimes it's 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 not a pleasant feeling anymore. have you ever thought of deciding that okay maybe i should just leave her at home has that ever deterred you no never mm -hmm. i always if i have the opportunity i always want to carry her wherever i'm going even though it's not easy because you know you need, you need to carry her wherever you're moving from the car you know from the car to where you're going to sit and then you end up sitting down when people are standing you can't stand up you can't participate in whatever they are doing because you just carry her sitting down there but that never made me for one day to ever say i don't want to go with her i always want to go with her awesome okay. now we understand that less than five percent of children and young persons with um, disability have um, access to education and training of which girls and young women face significant barriers to participating in social life and development just like you've stated now do you have are there any kind of um, lesson or home tutor or teacher that you have for Zit? And let's start with that first. Do you have any kind of home lesson? How do you teach her? Because I remember we, before we started, you said uh, when she sees you, she greets you good yeah. evening. <laughs> and she knows how to say thank you after every meal. She knows mm. how to say sorry, yeah. mom. How do you manage <laughs> to do all of that? Yeah, she, because of, um, we relate with her. When you have a child that has a disability or you stay with people that have a disability you devise a means of communication and i think that's what we've been able to do okay she doesn't voice out words but her actions we know a lot we have been able to identify when she's hungry how she do that she, what, what? when she's hungry she made she makes gestures okay or maybe she wants to drink water she will do you know she's either hungry or she wants to drink water and uh, when she's watching a channel and you change the channel she cries whoa until you put that particular channel she wants to watch wow she keeps quiet and if she's uncomfortable too she cries and when we are gisting in the house when we say something funny 
or maybe the sister just say one word maybe a wrong english word she will laugh she will laugh at the <laughs> sister so i believe wow. she she understands and um we don't have any lesson teacher for her unfortunately this country they they've been talking about inclusive mm. education that's mm. getting children mm. with special needs to be in the same school with children that don't have any special needs should i call them normal children with those that have special needs unfortunately it's, that is not possible in this country you find out that some parents would want to withdraw their child from a school if you have children with special needs mm. in those schools so there is no inclusive education for them but there are special schools that one can enroll them which are very few and very expensive some are owned by individuals I think the ones I know are owned by individuals and uh, the one that is owned by the government too for a child like her when you put her in that school you need a special caregiver attached to her because some other children can take care of themselves go to toilet by themselves she needs someone to carry her feed her change diaper turn her even positioning on bed you need mm. to turn her if not she will lie down on one side throughout the day so what we and that do, could affect her later yes it gives uh, what we call pressure so so what happens is what we do at home is we use um we call them educational channels where you can put uh, some educational ch uh, channels on the television okay she watches where children are singing rhymes when they are they mm. are teaching you know i don't know whether she does understand but I don't know of what benefit that would be to her anyway because I believe she might not be able to go to school. So that's the only one we do. Oh wow. Since she cannot communicate verbally. Mm. Now uh, women with um, disabilities of all ages often have difficulty with um, physical access to health services. So have you ever experienced any kind of difficulty uh, assessing any form of healthcare service even though I know that you are a nurse? Um no i wouldn't say yes because the clinic or the hospitals that uh, most hospitals have special units for people with disabilities so okay. they don't go to go to get to go to the general clinic or unless if there are issues they can come to the general clinic but they go to their own particular neurology clinic where they are seen and they have not had any issue going to those clinics uh, most times i notice that most women that come to those clinics have issues with medication sometimes the drugs are not even available in the hospital mm. so you have to go around looking for them so and you have a particular place where you always get her drug yes i i have been able to identify one pharmacy that and, and i discussed with them and they are ready to always make the drug available so, so far i agree to be buying from them so that's where i go to regularly if not i'll end up walking around the streets of abuja looking for some of the drugs mm. and they are not available so women who have special needs are not stigmatized in hospitals they get i feel they get normal care like other uh, patients but they could still be vulnerable mm. Now, have you actually had um, people uh, like moms like you who have children with special needs that you can all go together, drop strength? Because I know how much this can really be exhausting. Mm -hmm. You just hold t hands together and just drop strength from each other. Yeah, unfortunately, I've not been able to meet a group of women. We've not been, I have not been in any group uh of women with children with disability but i belong to women groups that even though they don't have children with disability they are always there to support give you emotional support they could visit talk to you encourage you support financially and then otherwise any way they can that's the only one but i have not been any in any group of women with children with disability all right even as we begin to round up what are your future plans for zit my future plans 
I could say, if I say I don't have any plans for her, I will not be wrong, but my plans for her is a wish. I wish she could get well. What do you mean if you wish she could get well? What does being well mean? It means she doesn't have... I want to, to see her walk. Hmm. I want to hear her call me mother. I want to see her go out like other children. If possible. Everything is possible. Everything yeah, is possible. I believe. All right, so... We'd like to get your last words, even as we commemorate um, International mm. Day for the Girl Child. Mm. Zid is a girl mm. and she's not disadvantaged. So we'd like you to get your words to mm. parents, moms who have mm. children with special mm. needs and especially fathers, even for those who decide to stay or those who just decide they can't take it anymore. Okay. Um, when you have a child with special needs, I feel it is God's design to let you experience something. Having Z-Chat has opened my eyes to so many aspects of this life. I've learned to hold on. I've learned to love more. And I discovered that wherever I am, I think of her like 24 hours a day. Having a child with special needs is a gift if you look very well. If the father can stay, you have other children and those children will support the one that has special needs. And even up until now, he never called. Nothing. <laughs> not at all. So it's not a good idea to walk away. You could still have other children. Nobody plans to have a child and have a special need so you hold on you take care of the child love the child those children they know it's unfortunate um a writer someone wrote and i quote that so many innocent blood have been shed because they could not carry on mothers were left with the burden of taking care of children with special needs and they get tired and some will just give up and say let me allow the child to rest or do away with this child and carry on with my life. It's so unfortunate. I'm I'm trying to be very careful asking that question. I don't want to ask you that question. Mm. And I, I just want to run away from asking you that question if you've ever at any point had that thought. I'm just trying to be careful. I, I've tried not to ask you. I, yes. But you just brought it up. Yes. Let me not lie to myself. At a point when the pressure became too much, I felt... What am I living for? I struggle every day from morning till night. In fact, there was a day I told myself, I said, okay, what will happen is I will give her something that she would die. Me too, I will drink and then two of us will die and oh, rest. No. It has gotten to that extent, but <sighs> with, with encouragement, I meet people every day and I'm so fortunate to have so many friends along the way because of her. Somebody sees her today and will look for us tomorrow. I want to see this girl. I want to know the chat. Where is the chat? And that gives me the courage to want to hold on. And I am grateful to God that uh, not anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to hold her. I want to carry her to the end. So mothers should. Uh, it's not easy. But just keep holding on. I've had people who have supported me. People who I never knew. The church. The Catholic Church supported me. My colleagues at work supported me. And then my um, women group, people I've never met, who just chat me on Facebook. Can you send your account number? And I want to send something to the chat. It's grace. It's not easy, but it's grace. So let's keep holding on. There's a brighter side at the awesome. end of the day. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming and sharing your time with us, Linda Dawn. Mm -hmm. It's been a wonderful time having this talk with you. Thank you. And thank you, Zaid, for you coming. For Say hi, mommy. She's tired. <laughs> I can see that. Mm -hmm. All right, viewers. That's where we end this conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have been chatting with Linda Dawn. She's Zid Chat Nuru's mom, and it's been a wonderful time here on the conversation. Whatever you do, be it a woman or a, or a man 
it is if not for anything at least for the fact that we are celebrating international day for the girl child whatever child you see be it the one with special need or the one that doesn't have any need at all please stop the stigma it doesn't do them any good they need all the support or the care that they can get thank you so much for tuning in i'll see you again next time from the nation's capital abuja i am annabelle oji god bless nigeria <laughs>